Welcome, welcome to today's multi-cloud briefing on the frontiers of generative AI for the enterprise. AI is reshaping the entire business landscape, but not every organization has a roadmap on how they're going to capitalize on the full potential of AI. Today, we'll share some perspective of what VMware is doing with AI, as well as some actionable insight on how to make AI work for you. I'm joined today by Sumit Dawan, President of VMware, and Sujata Banerjee, Vice President of Research. Let's get to it. Sumit, welcome to the Multicloud Briefing. It's great to have you here. Great to be here. So there is a lot of buzz and excitement about generative AI in the consumer space, but I want to learn from you, because you talk to customers every day, what do you hear from them in the context of the enterprise? Well, you're right. You know, it's kind of impossible to ignore the momentum that ChatGPT had and just made this whole concept of generative AI that works with content creating content, interpreting content in some amazing ways. Now, I have to say, while the buzz is in the consumer world with ChatGPT, uh, the real impact of the technology is going to be in the enterprise. The effectiveness and the efficiency this will drive to a range of functions that deal with content, from whether it's a developer trying to build the code, a customer service representative who's serving the customer, and everyone in the middle, including marketing, sales, etc., and so, you know, I get a, an opportunity in my job to be able to speak with several business leaders as well as CIOs. And uh, they're all really contemplating how to use this technology in amazing ways for their own businesses. And CIOs, in many cases, are both excited as well as concerned. Excited as in there's tremendous potential, they're evaluating the technology, what to do, how to power up various different business scenarios concerned because there are unanswered questions about using the technology, sometimes in public domain, how will the regulatory to privacy to intellectual property concerns that they have are going to be addressed. So those are the context of conversations I get engaged with in this world of Gen AI. Early, promising, exciting, but at the same time concerning. It's great to be in iTech because every few years there is a big new transformation. It feels like being in the internet in 1995 right now. Yeah, but I tell you, the impact of this one is going to be bigger, if not, uh, you know, and faster than what we saw before. So at the hour, we're being at the forefront of innovating in the multi-cloud world, right? We know that 90% of our customers are using two or more clouds today. So tell me about the relationship between multi-cloud, the multi-cloud architecture, the opportunity and the challenges, and generative AI. You know, we believe multi-cloud is the foundation for enabling Gen AI in the enterprise. And there are two fundamental reasons for that. Firstly, it's about data. Now, if you think about it, today's enterprise data is in multi-cloud. Some of it is okay to be in public cloud and even in public domain, and others has to be in a highly controlled and many times even private cloud environment. That's just the reality of how the enterprise works and what their policies are and where the data is. It becomes even more compounded when it comes to generative AI because this data is critical for creating you know, any kind of applications. And so because of different data being in different locations, you need a multi-cloud infrastructure, you need a multi-cloud platform to use this data across multiple clouds. Secondly, the heart of Gen AI is enabled through the LLMs or learning models that take all this data and have the, uh, the algorithms that you know, bring the power of Gen AI. And in some cases, enterprises will be able to use broadly available in public domain, you know, these LLMs for training their public domain data. That's feasible within VMware, we are doing some of it as well. But in many cases, the proprietary information or for privacy concerns, as well as the efficiency of how you train these LLMs, you have to use specific LLMs in a most efficient way to be run in private cloud. Okay, so both because of the data, as well as the LLMs that customers are going to choose they are going to need a multi-cloud platform and multi-cloud infrastructure. And when it comes to VMware, we enable multi-cloud for our customers. 
customers can, as we say, use the best cloud for their applications. We, we call that approach cloud smart. Gen AI is the next generation workloads that customers can use with the multi-cloud and cloud smart approach in the future. They can use the right type of application that is built on these LLMs in the cloud of their choice. And the customers that have already taken step with multi-cloud, with VMware, they're two steps closer to adopting these power of next generation Gen AI workloads. So to me, multi-cloud is the foundation for enabling Gen AI faster, quicker in the enterprise. So choice of where the data comes from across cloud, choice of where you run your model and your application with high efficiency, but with the control and privacy that enterprise customers require. Well said. So with the exponential adoption of AI in the enterprise, people are concerned about ethical issues and responsibility. What is our approach internally at VMware? Listen, we're taking it very seriously. Of course, we are adopting the Gen AI technology, and I want to assure our audience and our customers that it's critical for VMware. At VMware, we are committed to a core set of principles built upon, number one, privacy and security of our customers and partners' information. Number two, usage of the technology and the data in an inclusive, fair, explainable, and transparent way. It's extremely important to us. And number three, making sure that we have reliability and safety of however the technology is applied, taken into account first and foremost. So ethics and how we use it in Gen AI is a collective responsibility of all of us in the industry and within VMware, we're taking it extremely seriously. So Sumit, as we look ahead at uh, VMware Explorer, can you tell us how generative AI will factor into VMware strategy? Yeah, so you know our goal at VMware is to democratize access to Gen AI for the enterprise. That's our fundamental goal. As we think about what enterprises are dealing with, they're dealing with how to get started quickly. Do they have choice and flexibility? Can they make sure that their data is protected? And are the systems they are going to use efficient? Sometimes it can be extremely costly to train. So having choice of using the right learning models becomes extremely important. So that's our goal. Democratize Gen AI in the enterprise. A key things to do so would be firstly, offering customers control over their intellectual property and privacy, number one thing. Because without that, it will only create friction and the technology will not be effective in the enterprise. Secondly, cost effectiveness. As I mentioned, the right learning model for the right application. We are going to make sure that customers can run these learning models in the most efficient way on our infrastructure. And thirdly, how quickly customers can bring the value of the Gen AI time into the enterprise. We want to make sure that that's as fast as possible by bringing simplicity into the solution we bring to customers. So at Explore, I'm very, very excited. Our customers are get to learn about new technology innovations that we are bringing, bringing into our platform, our multi-cloud and cross-cloud services solutions. And secondly, our ecosystem. We know we have to give customers choice and flexibility and not necessarily lock them in to a single set or a stack. So our platform will enable ecosystem partners of whole range of ecosystem partners from providers of LLMs to service providers that enable the stack at the enterprise in a quick and rapid fashion. We're excited about it and in just a few weeks, Many of our customers get to see and feel this new technology in their hands. So thank you, Sumit, for your insight. We really appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me and look forward to everyone to be at Explore. Fantastic. As you heard from Sumit, VIAWARE is focused on unlocking the huge potential of AI in the enterprise. But now, let's go a little deeper on the technical side with Sujara Banerjee. So welcome, Sujara. I'm very excited to talk to you about AI because of your role in uh, research at VMware. So tell us about the focus on AI in the research lab at VMware. Thanks, Vittorio. Really glad to be talking to you about this topic. 
it's a really exciting time for um, all of us in the uh, tech world where we have had some really exciting innovations in AI and in particular generative AI, which has captured everybody's minds. In the research group here, we've been looking at some of the problems related to deep neural networks and uh, now more recently uh, large language models about the robustness and explainability of these models because they are wonderful, but they do have problems as well. And uh, in terms of the um, robustness and explainability and the resource requirements of these large language models from the training perspective, from the inference perspective, there are a lot of systems related problems that we need to solve. How do we make it more efficient to run these workloads on in data center at the edge? What are the resource constraints? Uh, privacy and security are really important problems in this context. And we've been working on topics like resource efficiency in federated learning topics, which are really important in being able to run machine learning without having to exchange the actual data, which might have some privacy constraints. And so we've been looking at um, many of these related topics and uh, looking forward to, to contributing to this field as we go forward. Tell us about the challenges that you see in integrating AI and generative AI into a cloud environment. I see this from two perspectives. One is how do we run AI workloads on infrastructure, uh, cloud infrastructure um, efficiently, uh, also, um, how do we use AI and machine learning to improve the cloud infrastructure itself so it can have some really nice properties of scalability, automation, and so on? And uh, if you think about the AI stack that is evolving, it's pretty complex. Um, there are, you know, there's obviously hardware and software components. Uh, in addition, you have these data operations and infrastructure related uh, layer um, machine learning operations on top, which enable you to orchestrate distributed training and inference. And then you have the applications on top. It's also a whole bunch of new components like perhaps vector databases, which help you do in context learning. So all of these layers put together, it's, it's relatively complex and there are many choices at each of these layers. So from a, a technical perspective, how do you make it easy for somebody who's just interested in getting their work done without having the infrastructure get in the way? How do we make it easy for them to run their workloads? And in addition, how do we make it easy for folks who are interested in running their own data sets in their own environments without having to transmit the data anywhere. These kinds of privacy issues, securing models, securing data, there are a number of different challenges that need to come together. So at VMware, we are looking into this entire stack on how we make it easy for people to use it and uh, how do we make sure that as things evolve, this choice and the set of trade-offs that one can make are visible to customers, visible to enterprises, so they can make their own choices about what they want to run on in their environments. So it's about performance, it's about uh, privacy, security, it's about getting more out of the infrastructure that you already have, and to integrate new infrastructure as it comes along into your environment very simply, very easily. So if you have accelerators that you want to use, you should be able to use them. If you don't have accelerators, you know, uh, how do you do the, some of the training on, on prem? Maybe it takes a little bit more time, but you're still able to do it. And uh, so maybe to touch upon the relationship between multi-cloud and AI, and you just talked about the, the ability to do the modeling on on prem, maybe run then run it uh, on cloud, and vice versa. Can you elaborate more from a technical perspective with the challenges and advantages of the multi cloud world in the context of AI? The reason why people have been gravitating towards multi cloud environments is that they want choice. 
uh, in terms of the services, in terms of resilience in their overall environment. Uh, it's the same kind of a story. This is a new workload where data is a very important component and data tends to be naturally distributed across infrastructures. Maybe they are in multiple clouds, maybe they are at the edge in people's on-prem environments. And so in, in some sense, the fact that data is already distributed and you want to harness all that data into building models for your specific use cases naturally lends itself to the multi-cloud environment. And we've been, as you know, in VMware, working on the multi-cloud infrastructure to make it easy for enterprises to manage their assets across multiple clouds and multiple uh, regions, multiple sites. And it's the same kind of extension. We want to be able to provide this new workload, the same kind of capability uh, to manage it like it was one environment across multiple clouds. So that's where, I mean, I think it's an, a natural progression where generative AI workloads will also run in multi-cloud environments. And we have quite a few of those pieces already built out in terms of management and orchestration. And now the billion dollar questions. Where do you see AI in the next five and 10 years? That's a great question. And nobody has a crystal ball. Um, most experts did not foresee that generative AI would, would co come up with these kinds of amazing capabilities so quickly. And so while we don't know exactly how it will play out, what is interesting to note is that some of the most challenging technical problems related to uh, large language models and generative AI in, in general have been worked on for a while. When deep neural networks came about uh, more than a decade ago, it took a while for people to realize that there were imperfections. Um, you couldn't quite explain how um, they worked internally. Uh, they were not very robust. And so large language models and generative AI pose new challenges, but I expect that many of these problems in the next five to 10 years, we will have a very good handle on it. Um, there are sort of questions related to model architectures. The uh, transformer model, which is what a lot of the large language models are based on, is that the best architecture? Um, how do you make sure that if your model has learned something that you didn't want it to learn, how do you make it forget some aspects of it? So uh, these are some really interesting questions that I'm sure we will be looking at. And furthermore, it's really important to note that we are here because of a lot of innovations in the infrastructure space. So we will continue to see um, innovations that make it much easier to run these models, um, whether it's training or inference, very efficiently. So sustainability is a really important um, uh, quest for us. And a lot of the existing models, they take up tremendous amounts of resources. So how do we continuously make it more efficient? I think we're going to see many breakthroughs in that respect. If there's one thing that VMware is really good at is you know getting efficiency out of existing infrastructure. So this was a great conversation. Thank you, Sujata. Thank you, Vittorio. Thank you for joining us today. We'll be discussing AI and much more at the Hour Explore the week of August 21st in Las Vegas, followed by more events throughout the world. We hope you can join us and I'll see you there.